often we think of risk taking as a negative thing. Mm -hmm. But when our children become adults, they need to take risks at work. They need to put themselves out of their own comfort zone to learn new things. If we have been saying, stay in the box, make sure you don't make mistakes or don't let anybody see their, your mistakes, <laughs> then our children won't have a healthy sense of healthy risk taking. So now the children are working, they're completing their task or they're achieving something. And we often get, you know, either too critical or too excited. So let's talk about celebration and celebrating milestones. So when our children have achieved small or large milestones, how can parents celebrate that and still remain encouraging of their children? Yes, because I think children notice when we're being too, uh, patronizing to them, we, we're being too overly praising, oh, you know, good job, good job. Like I have, nobody wants to hear that all the time. I tried to talk to my children uh, w using encouragement and sometimes a little bit of praise in a way that I would say, talk to another adult. I tried to not act like I'm the adult and I am in charge of your, your um, confidence and your self-esteem. And so I need to tell you how you feel, not top down, not talking down to them. Because sometimes we can talk down to people even when they did something really well. And we're trying to encourage them. It may sound like none of this would be ever said verbally, but it, the tone and the way it's said can sometimes imply, well, yeah, you didn't know what you're doing and now you do. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> um, so I, I try to respect their self-esteem and talk to them like I would talk to another adult. And mm -hmm. um, because often we do talk to children and I understand why we have baby talk is actually very helpful for babies. Um, there's a point at which uh, the children are old enough to, to know, wait, that sounds like you didn't think I could do it before. So a lot of encouragement, we have a, a tool in positive discipline called encouragement, and it's more about acknowledging the child's effort and that mistakes are part of the learning process and that, that we celebrate mistakes as they happen. Oh, wow, you learned something that didn't work. And then the, the celebrating the outcome can be, what do you want to do about it? Wow, you accomplished this big goal. How would you like to celebrate? I would ask them and not assume that they might like the way that I would want to celebrate. Mistakes. Celebrating mistakes. Now, many of us, when we make a mistake, our parents' role might, they might think at least, that their role is to keep their children from making the mistakes again. So yeah. it could also result in, how did you make a mistake? How are you going to fix it? What are you going to do about it? And you're talking about celebration. Tell me more. Well, this is something I did not grow up with. It's not like my parents admonished me or really shamed me and blamed me for all my mistakes. They didn't do that a lot. But I just never had heard this idea that mistakes were okay. I was the first grandchild born in my family of a bunch of grandchildren. I was the oldest child. I just put this pressure on myself that I should not make mistakes and that I should learn something the first time. So that was a big, big uh, learning point for me in positive discipline when I read the book. And then it, even after I read the book, it took me a very, very long time, years, in fact, for me to say the words, I made a mistake. I, I couldn't, my, my ego, my self-esteem couldn't handle that. And so because it was so hard for me to learn, I really wanted my children to not have to learn that in their 30s. So um, that was the biggest aha I had when I read Jane's book. Like, even to this day, I worry that I didn't teach my children that enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's done. And, and I think I was a good enough parent. It's a constant thing I have to remind myself of, that mistakes are part of the learning process. I still, oops, I, you know, I just pause sometimes and I have to remind myself it's okay to make mistakes but I think we all have this challenge in life that even when we're taught that from a young age, um, we 
humans just feel inadequate. You know, we, we, we want to feel adequate. And we use those mistakes as evidence that we're not adequate. We're so easy to go there. And so that's why I wanted my, my children to hear, explicitly hear the message, it's okay to make mistakes. Well, oh, you learned something that didn't work. So I tried to very calmly and naturally make that part of my conversations with my children. It's not, not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. And now that we are adults who also were children once and have mi- mistakes and know what it feels like and everyone um, hearing this conversation can relate to themselves making a mistake. And when you're a child, for example, two times two, and they say four and two plus two, four, and then you continue to go on and you're being quizzed and those lightning tests that they do where, you know, you have to quickly answer the questions and every child is wired differently. And perhaps a child that doesn't want to make a mistake because everyone has different beliefs. And if I make a mistake, I'm going to be smart, not smart, you know, whatever it might be punished. And based on that, and they become emotional, chances are instead of thinking, being able to critically think in that moment, because of that emotion, temporarily, their brain is going to go into that confusion state and not really rationally think, though they might know the answer, but because now it's a speed test, ah, it just freak out. And they might not do well in tests. That doesn't necessarily mean they're not good at math or they're not good at debate. They just need skill building that you were talking about. Let's practice. Let's work on it. And let's do it faster, faster. Ah! And making fun, like you were saying, just creativity, just creating that hula hoop around it or a yarn around it and breaking a task down to a way where it's fun and they get something wrong and say, what did you learn from this? You got something wrong on your paper and it has a red mark. How do you feel about it? What are you going to do about it differently next time? And I think children will feel more encouraged if we did that. But when we say, why did you get a B plus? It should be A. Instead of saying, you got a B plus, how do you feel about it? Chances are they're going to say, you know, I really don't like B plus. Are they going to say, you know what? That's the greatest thing today. And kind of keeping it where it is and including encouraging them to, of course, it, you know, learn, but which child really says, I just don't want to learn, except when they feel discouraged and believe that they're not smart. So I appreciate this conversation about mistakes. And as adults, there's so much that we can do to support our children. And then we forget that we have the power, that magic wand of being that encouragement fairy or, you know, person that really uh, brings our child the confidence or we can remove that confidence unknowingly. And this is really helpful. That made me think of um, risk-taking. Often we think of risk-taking as a negative thing. Mm -hmm. But when our children become adults, they need to take risks at work. Uh, They need to put themselves out of their own comfort zone to learn new things. If we have been saying, stay in the box, make sure you don't make mistakes or, or don't let anybody see their, your mistakes, <laughs> then our children won't have a healthy sense of healthy risk taking. Because in order to achieve in life and move forward, we often have to put ourselves out of our comfort zone and we are going to make mistakes if we try something new. And so it's hard to think about that sometimes that when, when they're children and we're trying to say, do it this way, this is how the teacher wants it. It's hard, harder for us to value taking a risk, making mistakes, and think about, oh, what do I want for my child when they're an adult? Because when we're building those beliefs about mistakes for children, they carry that until their adulthood. Mm. And if they make a mistake at work and they try to hide it from their boss, it usually is not going to turn out so well. Right. <laughs> and they're probably going to hide a lot of their mistakes really than Everything that we don't want, we receive sometimes when we have control or fear-based, right? So when we're fearful, of, my child's not going to go to Harvard. Well, not everyone goes to Harvard. However, our goal is to create happy children and invite them to be their best. And looking at those strengths, chances are 
um, we're going to be able to invite the children to feel how capable they are. And when they also feel how capable they are, chances are, like you said, they might be able to take those risks that we want them to take because they're willing to mess up and learn from it. And they're not going to sit there saying, when I make a mistake, I am terrible, not smart. But they're going to say, yep, I made a mistake. Yeah, next time I'm just going to do X, Y, and Z different. So what a what a difference and very small shift. But when we're taking our job as a CEO of this child, uh, we can take it one way or the other. And the leadership qualities emerge at home. If you like the content of this video, please don't forget to follow. And also, if you want more information, visit the website yogi.com.